So we are about to go on a podcast. We've, we've been on a couple podcasts and these things, they're fun. They're easy to get into a chat and share stories of the things we've been doing. So this one that we're going to be going on is called Epic Education Radio. We also have a competing educational activity going on right now, which Avalon's taking a test in French. How's your exam going? No, if you have to go to the bathroom, it's right there. <laughs> thanks for thanks for being so agreeable here. Are you ready to talk all about our life? <laughs> our life. Our crazy life. Hello! Hello. <laughs> we are sorry, we're late. Um, it's not our fault. You know Well, we, it's kind of our fault. We have you know, we're in an RV. Um, just to add just to add more crazy to the crazy, right? <laughs> that was fun. Hey, that was fun. <laughs> Welcome to our World Towning vlog. Now, if you don't know us, I'm Will. You should know us. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Jessica. <laughs> and we've been now traveling the world, starting on our fourth year now, and we've gone everywhere from Costa Rica to Ecuador to South of France to all over Europe now to all over Europe now in a motorhome in our lovely 21 foot RV. So that's kind of an update on us in 30 seconds or less. <laughs> if you're new here and if you've been here for a while, you're going, "Why are they telling us this?" Because there are new people all and we want to know. And a year from now, when someone watches this, they'll be like, "I'm not, I'm watching this way out of order." <laughs> But anyway, we, we like to share our story a lot. And one of the ways that we like to share our story are through podcasts. I love doing podcasts. Do they're, you like they're a lot of fun. There's no pressure because I have all these weird tics and allergies <laughs> and stuff. So I don't have to look or behave no. accordingly. I just have to speak. So right now you just saw that we were on Epic Education again for the second time. The second time. Jason must like us or we must not be that annoying, right? We have a lot to share. The RV's got a whole world of entertainment Right, to share. right? We can repeat all the podcasts we did before because we've got a whole new life now. Exactly. We also did RV Entrepreneur recently. You should link that in the notes. We're going to link, link a whole bunch of them. That was really fun as well. Yep. And they're going to be coming to Europe to RVs. So it was neat to kind of share stories and share what we know since we're, we're experts now. <laughs> but anyway, so we are still in Slovenia. And being in Slovenia, we, we're, we're starting, to, we're starting to realize that we still love it. We still love it, and that life's a little bit different as you go east from France and Germany and Italy. I mean, I guess that's, I guess you'd say it's different, but we're experiencing different people, different cultures, different way of living, different terminology for how we live. It's and, pretty interesting. And one of the things we're seeing now are traveling people. We give them a vibe about Hey, well, I think we are having our first gypsy encounter. <laughs> There's like 15 caravans that all look the same and they're all attached to utility trucks. And the women are like taking everything out of the house or the caravan and cleaning. And then they look like they have like a full setup. But I guess some would call us gypsies, right? It cost me five pounds. It's cost. So, okay, so we're four months into this trip, and we have we have um, been told that we are going to encounter gypsies. And I've also learned in the bathroom this morning that that is not a politically correct term; that they should be called mobile people. Um, and I it was told maybe Southern Italy. Well, we've encountered them in Slovenia, and. I, so it's just not, like, meaning a gypsy is not what I thought it was going to be because as a child, my dad used to tell me when I was being poorly behaved that he was going to sell me to the gypsies for two pe pizzas. He tells us that too. He still tells them that, for two <laughs> pizzas. So I had this, like, idea that they had, like, dangly bells and stuff and they were going to come and, like, hypnotize me and then take me away or something, you know, my child mind. And I guess there's all kinds of types of mobile people and I guess we, we're mobile people. I guess we could, people could call us gypsies or whatever. So. From what I've seen, and we've we've spoke with a couple of them, the kids played with the kids, and what we've learned, at least from our observation, is they have really nice caravans. They're very modern. They're tag-alongs. The men seem to have, like, um, utility vehicles, and it looks like they go from town to town doing um, landscaping and... Why were you recording my caravan? <laughs> we have a condition that we've created and diagnosed, and I think it's going in some medical book now. It's called, I shoot too much video. We shoot other people. And usually it's okay, but sometimes it's not okay. Right, so in this case, I caught them on camera and it just didn't turn out, well, I didn't expect it. Uh, but it was an interesting experience. And 
these are the cool things about traveling is we get to experience different ways of living. We get to see it all. And sometimes it's really great and sometimes it's not so great and other times it's better than we anticipated or not what we anticipated and I like that. I think it's pretty cool. So we were just interrupted from me speaking because one of the guys in the caravan, the mobile people just came over and started yelling at us for filming at the campsite. We were filming the, the property, not them. We were just filming like vehicles and caravans. We do it all the time as we travel. So that was, that was kind of scary. He was really, really aggressive and creepy and whatever. That was really weird. Our experience up until this point has been pretty good, but now this guy kind of coming and yelling at us was kind of creepy, but I guess creepy people are everywhere, right? We're leaving Ljubljana. Ljubljana. We're so good at saying Ljubljana. Oh my god. We, yeah, that was great, Will. Listen to me. Ljubljana. <laughs> we, we should move there. Now, for those of you who are new here, you're going to quickly learn that we are pronunciation challenged. We are. We're, not, we're more than just challenged. We're, we're, we're deficient <laughs> in a lot of ways. We try. We try. You know, a lot of people just shy away from it and say, Point to it on a map, but we do it. We go for it. We embarrass ourselves. <laughs> Ljubljana. I think. Well, we know there's an app to help us, but that app's yeah, really. But it's not really great. It's not as great as we like it to no, be. No, because remember when it went Liechtenstein? We're like, none of the locals are saying but it I'll that way. I will never ever think of Liechtenstein the same the way same, right? without saying Liechtenstein. <laughs> so we are now leaving. Ljubljana. 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 And we are leaving at this time because this was our predetermined time to leave. We were yes. ready to go. However, we are actually a little bit grateful that we're leaving now because the the traveling people, the whatever they are, they get a little aggressive, a little hostile. Yeah, and it's been really loud here and there's been a, they've been fighting a lot and screaming and not willing to share the facilities like the laundry and stuff like that. So we've kind of had to kind of like, we're next in line. It's funny. Yeah, yeah. I, I had to, I was next in line for the laundry and the woman, one of the I guess, traveling people, it. she tried to get in front of me and she's like, well, I really need this. So I was like, well, so I, do we. I need clean clothes I haven't too. worn underwear in a week, lady. <laughs> Cry me a river. And this is true. She's kind of <laughs> um, so I'm sure we're going to encounter more uh, mobile people as we go. Um, it wasn't a horrible experience, but I wouldn't say it was the greatest experience. Um, so I hope we get better experiences as we travel because we want to learn about how other people live and, and everything. And, and people are aggressive towards us and not willing to share and play nice. But it know? is official now. We are officially out of like traditional Western camping. So yeah. France and Germany and Austria. Now we're in anything goes. And we're, yeah. we're kind of excited about that. Sometimes Will talks in his sleep and he says words like drone, camping car, motorhome. But occasionally he says propane. And I've been saying <laughs> I've been saying that word a lot lately. And it's it's one of those things where when you're in a camping car and you're driving around in Europe and you don't have And it's cold, which it is nine months out of the year. It's freezing and we don't have refillable bottles because we just haven't made that investment. We're cheap. We're cheap. <laughs> we have to deal with having exchange bottles around around the continent. Where we can basically. Right. But that means you have to throw one away and pick one up. It's a real pain in the rear end. But for us, Ljubljana was perfect. When it it comes was to propane. perfect. And pizza and everything. Yeah, absolutely. We we found a place where we can refill our German tanks in for Slovenia. free. And they pay you to refill them. And our French okay. tanks, unbelievable. <laughs> Switching out our um, gas tanks, our propane tanks in different countries is complicated and so we've had to dump one along the way and get one in a country that we were in and then once we leave it's no good for us. Right now Will just found a place that will refill the tanks that we currently have and I just heard him say that this guy was his new best friend. Like he's so happy. The gas is a bit complicated with us and kind of finding it and stuff so we left our campsite this morning and when he went to check out he found out that it was half the price we thought it was going to be then on our way out we stopped and we got a five euro pizza and now this i think will gosh i hope he doesn't kiss this guy it's gonna be embarrassing so i need to fill up two propane tanks i don't know if... your bottle yes bottle i suppose so, yes no problem oh you are my hero <laughs> i'm your friend now you are you are you are my best friend right now. 
So I have this tank and I have a tank, a French tank. They both, they're both the same thing though. Yeah, no problem. Okay, oh my gosh, this is wonderful. Here we will refill with five kilo and they're 10 kilo. Okay. All together is 15 kilo. And how much all together? 15 kilo. And, but the price for all the kilos? The price is about, I don't know, about 35. 35? Excellent. Something like that. Okay. Do you have it? They are gonna fill up our French tank and our German tank. I just told them how about all about it, but you can tell them too because you're it so really happy. It is great because I'm so afraid of spending money on propane. I'm afraid of spending money on just about everything. So right. This is the life of a startup, guys. This is a grassroots startup, and we're gonna make this an, an international brand. So we gotta be careful with what we spend our ga my gas money on. Right? Everyone tells us that you can only fill up the French tanks with the French gas at the French location. Hogwash. Slovenia, it's like, it's lawless here. It's awesome. We love Slovenia. I don't think we should leave. No. So as, as you guys know, watching us, we don't like to change locations midweek because it gets in the way of <gasps> everything we do. I don't even, when he, we even said that changing locations midweek and I almost, <gasps> I gasp for air. We're working, we're schooling, we're teaching our class. We have calls with clients. It does not we'll work. we podcast. It does, or it, or a podcast. <laughs> it doesn't work for us. But today, we actually, on the way towards our ultimate destination is towards the coast of Slovenia, we saw a cave. We were told mm. to go to a cave. The cave was closed, so we, we went to the castle. We went to the Prediama. castle in a cave called Prediama. Oh, that was really good. That was better than mine. Well, we, we've already been there. <laughs> I know, but we're got, only there for an afternoon. You did I a good job lessons. on that. <laughs> Prediama Castle. It's, it's this epic castle built into a cave, and it's, it's something that you have to see at and least it's, once. It's creepy because you know we went in off season so no one was there and at the back of the castle you, it actually opens into the cave and you can climb up into the cave you can only go so far but it's kind of scary there with not many people yeah we had a good time we love doing things in the off season oh my gosh yeah i love it how do you pronounce the, the castle prediama Prediama Castle? Prediama. It means in front of the cave. It means in front of the cave. Prediama, yes. Okay, thank you. Castle in front of the cave. I love, love a field trip mornings. Okay, so we're in Prediama Castle and we are in the southwestern part of Slovenia. Now, what makes this castle really interesting is that it's built into the side of a of a rock wall and basically it's also part of a cave system so that being said this is like the oldest preserved castle that is built into a cave it is it's interesting it really is because you, you don't know where the cave begins and the castle ends and where the castle begins and the latrine begins it's it's really crazy but it's really cool because you don't see this stuff everywhere you pause it now so this is a total impromptu, unscheduled, unrehearsed. Grab a slice of pizza on your way out the door because we're going on a tour of a castle for lunch break. It's funny, like <laughs> we showed up, we're like, kids, let's go. They're like, what? Ah, <laughs> we're, we love doing school, we don't want to leave school. Is that what they said? They're very used to their schedule. <laughs> but they're now in this place and they cannot wait to get through this thing. Like, they, oh, come on, I found the next number, come on. They've got oh, these little guys right there. And there's a dungeon and there's a torture wait. chamber. And... <laughs> they're, they're, they're really excited. This is a cool classroom. It really is. <laughs> I finished four! I'm already on five. And that is the end of our tour of the the castle. I, I, I'd already forgotten how to say it, but the kids actually enjoyed it. They're gonna say they didn't enjoy it, but they actually did enjoy it. I, it's amazing. Once you get them out, how much they actually love this stuff. When 
we started this World Italian Journey, we were convinced that we were going to have... No campgrounds. None whatsoever. We we're had... too tough. He's too cheap. We've got solar. We're going to boondock we it. We are so ready to go. And we were, we were determined that it just would never happen. But then the sun went away. Sun the solar away. didn't charge. The, the rain came. And happened. we've had to dip into campgrounds from time to time. It's okay. It's okay. I don't love it, but it keeps us all sane from time to time. It allows us to dump the poop and it gets us to yeah. where we need to go. But when we got to the Slovenian coast, we realized that it is time to get back to our roots, our, our foundation our for camping. Our boondocking, wild camping, off the gridding lifestyle. Yep. And we found a perfect spot right on the water. Right on the water. Welcome to Isola, Slovenia. We are now on the west coast of Slovenia. Slovenia has a portion of its country that is on the water. It's only like 30 kilometers or so they say, which is about 20 miles, a little bit less. And it borders to the north, Italy, and to the south, Croatia. So we are at this point right on the water and we could not have found a better place to spend a few days before we hit Italy because we need to go there. We have a special guest coming to visit because Largo's birthday is coming up real soon but we wanted to crash on the ocean side for a little while and the Slovenian coast we heard is amazing. So this is what we get to see for the next couple days and we found an amazing place to boondock. Now what we're finding is during the off season in these coastal areas, basically in all of Europe, when all the campgrounds shut down, essentially all the tourism goes away as well. And when that happens, boondocking becomes a very big thing. And where we're at right now is right here is the water and right there. And if you look behind the trees right over there, you can peer and you can see our camp ground, which is basically a municipal parking lot, which is where our, our RV is at. So we essentially just walk underneath this tree and past this gate and then we wind up at our campsite. And there we are right there. They're actually doing a lot of work to this parking lot because this is actually a parking lot meant for RVs. But at this point, since the season is over, they're actually doing a lot of renovations to it. They're redoing the spots for the RVs so they have a level space to, to sit at. And they're also adding facilities like dumping, like electricity and everything else. So normally this spot where we're at would be 15 euros a night. Now because they're doing construction, they've opened the gates and they said, come on in because since we don't have facilities, enjoy it because it's a great space to sit anyway. You're just not gonna get any services. Whew, <sighs> I gotta take a breath. We live in 21.5 feet, that's just under seven meters and we work and school and work and work and work and work and that scenery gets really boring after a while so we tend to dip into coffee shops and restaurants anywhere there's a free wi-fi connection that they'll let us sit there for hours at a time and usually if we just keep eating and drinking coffee they're fine with us staying i mean obviously we never stay if it's a packed restaurant and they need the table but most places especially off season there's plenty of room for us and we go during off hours and then we hashtag their instagram accounts and they really like that you ready to go, Dad? Slovenian pizza place, pizza. But, pizza but it's great because right by our campsite or our campground or our parking lot, we're going. It's not a campsite or campground. It's a parking lot. You can look over the water and you can actually see Italy. It's so a great parking lot. It's a great parking lot. It is, I and love they're parking. and they're fixing it up, and it's going to have full services for what 15 euros a night. And it's right on the water. It's beautiful. I'm sure in the summer it's going to be packed. They're remodeling it right now. Yes, they get where they're getting picked. I guess. Yeah, we've been there for what three days. We've been there for 
two days to see a third night coming up. Yeah, there's only been a couple other RVs there. It's, it's really nice. I like it. We really like Slovenia. Yeah. I heart Slovenia. Me too. Me too. So we eventually had to leave our location our, our boondocking oasis of Isola, Slovenia. I mean, they didn't kick us out or anything. We just, we needed to move on, right? right? I mean, I think we could have stayed there for a month, Will and I. We loved it. But if you're ever RVing around Slovenia or anywhere around Europe and you want a place to stay that's really cool and really just a picturesque place yeah. to stay, stay in Isola. It's really cool. Yeah. I'm not sure what this is. This is kava. It tastes like coffee, but it tastes, it tastes like Amarillo style coffee. I'm not even sure if this is coffee, but it's, it's not bad. And good morning from Izola, Slovenia. We are heading to a town called Piran. Now this is supposed to be like one of the most majestic, most medieval, scenic, beautiful towns that there are in all of Slovenia. We're still on the coast and we're just getting our last skate in before we take off. Today, uh, our plan was to get out very early, but um, Will slept in. Yeah, right. <laughs> I hate it when he does that. You gotta start getting up early. All right, let's rock and roll. You guys ready? Yeah. So we are now in Slovenia, but if you look right up there, those mountains—that's Italy right there. We're basically about like 10 miles away from the border. So this area that we're going through right now, we're about to enter into the city and we're really discovering the fact that this is like basically all trapped in cobblestone. So when they say medieval, medieval, they're not kidding. I don't think they're kidding here. <laughs> this is what we're going to see right over there. This is actually a really cool place to visit. Now, Slovenia is not exactly on everyone's number one hit list, although it should be. It should be. But it's, honestly, well, it is my favorite country that we've visited so far, so far. So far. Besides France, France will always have a special place in my heart. But besides that, of all the countries we've visited so far, this is top for me. Is it top for you? It is. It, uh, it's hard not to be top. I'm just gonna say, on the record, I like the scuta cheese, and thank you for the follower who referred or suggested it. I like to say. She liked it. <laughs> we like cheese a lot, and we'll go out of our way to go ahead and chase down a cheese that you guys recommend. The so. problem is, Will, is that you were completely turned off when he saw the package, he was turned off. But if you guys have any cheeses that we should be looking at. Oh yeah, different countries? Yeah, so. Did you see my eyes light up? Anything in Spain, or Portugal, or Morocco, Morocco. That's really what we're looking at now. We know what we want in Italy and in France. Yeah. All right, so one of our followers said that we should try scuta, fresh cheese, while we're here in Slovenia. So I'm going to see if they have it. Okay, you're all Speak English? Yes. Do you have something called scuta? No. Someone, no. no. But is it, it's a cheese yeah. for uh, Slovenia? Yes, yes. You try here in the alley, in this little alley, it's okay. one market. Okay. Try it there. Okay, okay. is it okay. good? Yes, it, it okay. is, yes. Okay, thank you. All right, so we are on the hunt for scuta. Um, we can't seem to find it. She said, come up the alley and take the secret passageway and go into the man's house. No, she didn't really say that, but I asked her if it was good and she goes, it's good. That wasn't too convincing. Are you convinced? I hope you're good on this cheese. You, she's been really bad at picking cheeses lately. <laughs> this came as a recommendation from one of our followers and I'm going to follow through. The All last right. time she bought cheese, it was lactose free. So that <laughs> just tells you something. Stop. I hope this cheese is worth it. We've only been trying to find it for an hour. Scuta? Scuta uh, uh, case kladilnik. All right, let's see. I don't think it'd be over here. I think it'd be over here, but. No, I think I found it. Where? Right there. Oh. Oh my gosh, really? <laughs> the cottage cheese. <laughs> Oh, we'll see. Let's get it. So let's go back to what we said before because you said you didn't love Piran as much as it was. Well, I think because everyone said, oh, if you're going to go to Ljubljana, you have to go to Piran as well. So I ought to build up to be like this magnificent, majestic thing. And I think 
for what we needed and kind of chilling and just wandering and and just being it was great i didn't feel like it was a rich kind of cultural education or adventure experience at all but it's super beautiful it is beautiful it, it is beautiful really and i think is. it probably is crazy in the summer though it really is something you have to behold because well let's put it this way the if architecture the architecture is amazing yeah. and if you have a drone and you yeah. fly over it it becomes something else it's beautiful or if you don't have a drone you can just watch this So this place is just really a cute coastal town. Now there is a ton of history here and this place has been changing hands in terms of who owns it, who runs it, who governs it for the last 2,000 years essentially. The Romans and then the Byzantines and then the Romans again, then the Austro-Australian Hungries and the, all these guys basically <laughs> love to take control of this area because it's in like the hotbed of like the Northern Adriatic right next to Italy. This is like the middle of the conflict Europe for the last couple thousand years. And essentially, uh, there's a lot to see, and there's a lot to learn, but I don't know if we're gonna do that today. I think we're just gonna today take a nice little walk, enjoy this town, and kind of just connect as a family. Oh my God! Yeah. Oh my God. Oh my God. But essentially where I'm at is between two different countries. So this peninsula jets out a little bit and right back there is Italy and right over here is Croatia. This is so cool. You can pretty much swim to both countries. It's a cute town. It is, there's a lot of restaurants, there's a lot of walking around, there's a lot of cute architecture, there's a lot of... At least this time of year, I think you come here, you walk around, you see the medieval buildings, and you sit and have a drink and some lunch on the water, and then you call it a day. I think in the summer there's probably more going on, and then they have tours, but there's no tours that we can find right now except just a little map and our Jessica World Tour. Right, so mm. we're, we've been here for about three hours, and I think... I think we're ready to go. I think, I think yeah. we're done. All right, so that is the end of our Slovenia. We spent three weeks, I think, two ha two weeks. We would have stayed longer Slovenia. if the weather wasn't chasing us. You know, they say people chase the weather. No, it chases us. The weather's been our our nemesis for a long time. I don't know if we're cursed or we're just. Lucky. And everyone just says when I say that they say, "It's Europe," as if all of Europe is like has this big dark cloud hanging over it twelve months out of the year. Yeah, but it wasn't all that bad. I liked it though. I can't complain. I liked it a lot. And once we visit every country in the world, I think that's the first one we should repeat. What do you think? I think we definitely, if it's not going to be the first one, it's going to be on the list to repeat. Yeah. But we're not close to being done. Okay. So make sure you keep on watching our vlogs because we're going to see so much more. Thumbs up. Comment. Tell us more of what you want to see. And let us know about that cheese. Ciao. This is my fan club. This is the drone flying fan club of, where are we? At, Taiwan. At the castle. Taiwan. Taiwan. Oh, Taiwan. Taiwan! Everyone say, I love world towning! <laughs> okay! I love